Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Um, I know there's a lot of public meetings happening. There's a lot of good things happening in the city. So we appreciate you coming to this one tonight. Um, so we're going to be talking about the I-93 Bridge Park, Deck Park, Bridge Over the Water, Bridge Over the Highway, whatever you want to call it. But it's a way to connect downtown with the river. And that's, that's the goal of what we're looking at. Um, the stage we're at right now, oh, to introduce myself, I'm Beth Fenstermacher. I'm with the City of Concord in the Community Development Department. Um, tonight with me, I have Karen Hill, who's our transportation engineer in the city. And then we have our consultants from VHB, Greg Backus, Stephanie Kiza, and Ben Martin is somewhere hiding in the back. Um, so you'll meet them all tonight as we break out into groups. And they'll be doing the majority of the presentation tonight. Um, so we're going to have a brief presentation by the consultants tonight just to talk about the site, how we got to where we're at right now, uh, where we're going from here. And then we're going to break out into four groups. All groups are going to be the same, so it doesn't matter. We just want sort of even distribution so everybody can be heard. And you'll have a staff member or somebody from VHB there to take down your comments or any of your questions. We may not be able to answer all your questions tonight, but we'll write them down and try to get that information out. Um, on the city's website, we'll have this information up this week, as well as Concord TV will have a video. We'll be posting that as well. And the presentation, and we'll solicit comments throughout the process. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Greg Backus. He'll go through, and then we'll do our breakout afterwards. See who works. Thank you, Beth. <clears throat> Hello. Yep. Oh, it is working. All right. Um, quickly run through our agenda. We're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about the history. As Beth said, how did we get here? Um, <laughs> some of the study considerations, some of the observations that we've already made, some of the constraints such as right-of-way, infrastructure, and environmental. Uh, we're going to touch briefly on the Bow Concord project. Um, <clears throat> we want to talk about access across the river and to the river, uh, aesthetics and cost. Uh, and then we will do the breakout session. And there's a whole lot of other topics we'd like to touch on. This is just a timeline that shows um, how we got here from uh, way back when in 92, there was a Merrimack River charrette. Uh, importantly, in 2005, uh, there was an opportunity corridor master plan. Um, <clears throat> and, and then in 2008, the Concord master plan uh, 2030 was uh, prepared. And then you see there's a big gap until today. And some of the things that occurred during that period was the I-93 project got some legs and uh, is, is being developed. So um, this project is a little bit in response to that. I think we found that the timing was right. If we're ever going to do this, now's the time before you start seeing uh, final drawings out of DOT and, um, and construction started. So we want to, you know, I think this is our little window of opportunity to look at this. There was also, through the 93 review process, the city meetings, you know, the public meetings and all that, um, I think people latched on to some of the work that was done back in 2005 and said, you know, this project, the 93 project represents a big impact. Um, you know, a, a, wider pro a wider highway, it's already wide. What can we do to um, do something for the human side to get pedestrians and bicyclists uh, across the river and connecting to the river and over the river and that sort of thing. So I think that's, that's when um, council and the mayor identified this as an opportunity. The, the uh, feasibility study, um, you know, they appropriated the money to do a feasibility study to say, let's take a look and see what's possible. That's why we're here. <clears throat> So going back to the 2005 Opportunity Corridor Master Plan vision, this is one of the, I guess, telltale visions that came out of it that shows redevelopment along Store Street. You know, here's Loudon Road here, um, uh, Manchester Street's down the other end. And it showed a connection to the river very centrally located through the redevelopment of the Store Street area. Um, it shows riverfront um, improvements, pedestrian improvements, that sort of thing, a riverfront park. Um, I think when you look at these plans that, <clears throat> that show the I-93 project overlaid, 
that there is not real estate to do that. Um, just making it clear, there's a difference between that plan and what's currently available. Um, but still, I think this is the idea, was to get people out over the highway. And that's me talking. We want to hear from all of you later. <clears throat> so the Bridge Park vision as we see it, as we understand it coming into this meeting, is to span over the railroad, the highway, and the river, um, create an attractive public space with views of the Merrimack River, reduce highway noise to the extent that you'll be covering part of the highway, provide, li provide park-like pedestrian amenities, and we can talk about what that means, connect the downtown to the Merrimack River Greenway Trail, which is on the east side of the river, uh, and other points east. Um, provide a space for social mixing that is bringing populations from both sides of the river into a common space um, that they can enjoy the outdoors and that sort of thing. Um, and then create, create an attractive gateway to the capital city. One of the, one of the things I think that uh, came out of previous studies was that um, doing a landmark structure that would actually be attractive might attract people that are just passing through Concord to the North Country and might give them an idea that maybe they want to check Concord out, you know, stop, spend some time, spend some money. Um, <clears throat> so some of the things that we are um, considering during the feasibility study are opportunities. Um, opportunities for enhanced visual connectivity to the river from the downtown. Uh, a deck portion would provide public space high above the river, and then uh, a bridge portion would provide bike pad, co bike pad connectivity to the east side of the river and points east. And again, this is another image that came out of that previous study. Uh, it shows some steep ramps coming up and over the, the highway and the railroad, and then connecting down on the west side of the river, uh, which again, there's really no room uh, for the majority of the, the corridor to do that. We um, hired an architect who has experience in this sort of thing. After this meeting, they will go to work and try to create some visualizations. Um, we've worked with them before. This is a project we're doing with them down in the Washington, D.C. area. It has some similarities. It's a bridge. It's over a railroad. It's over a highway. Um, connects a development area to the airport, actually. This is another project that they did in Chicago. And I'm just showing these for a little bit of inspiration. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to, that this may happen here, but just to show that um, there's possibilities. And, and some of the guidance we've been given as a design team and as the city is um, to think big, think outside the box push the boundaries and you know, let the boundaries push back. So uh, that's why we're here. This is a project in Hartford, Connecticut, where they've um, done a structural development of their waterfront. It accommodates a lot of people, a lot of activity, adjacent to a bridge. And then I love this one in Ohio. Um, it's got the highway. <clears throat> it's got the riverfront development. It's got a signature bridge. Dick Lemieux's drooling over there. <laughs> He's always asked for a signature bridge. Um, what it doesn't have, though, is it doesn't have the highway adjacent to the river, it, you know, the highway set back. But, but anyway, very inspirational. So we also look at constraints, not just opportunities. And uh, this image, and you'll see when you look at the, at the plans on the walls, um, this shows our project area, our study area. This is Loudon Road here, and Manchester Street there, the river, the highway, and Store Street right there. And the color coding is such that yellow is private land, orange is railroad land, blue is state land, and purple is city land, and I don't see any purple. <clears throat> there is no land that the city owns between uh, the river and Store Street and beyond. Um, so on that note, I will say that some of the work we've already done has included meeting with the property owners and 
when we started the study, we were advised that that's going to be a dead end and that it has been anything but. Um, the property owners have really been receptive, not saying they're going to sign any easements tomorrow, um, but they're willing to listen. And that's, to me, I think that's a huge win already. Uh, and I think they understand that a bridge park could help them, not hurt them. You know, they understand that there's opportunity, perhaps, to bring more development, to bring more people to their establishments. Yes, sir. I'd like to point out that green area and back to the shitty property. I'm sorry, I skipped that. And Healy Park is green is is city property. Yep. The connection to that would provide quite a bit of river front land. It would. Yep. We can talk about that tonight. So um, we've touched on the I-93 improvements. Um, the plans that you see on the walls have uh, the latest development plans from the 93 project. It kind of shows the footprint of the project. Um, our understanding is, you know, they're obviously still in development. Our understanding is that DOT uh, was reevaluating or, or running new traffic numbers. Um, for our study, we're assuming that that footprint is probably worst case. Um, it could get smaller. It probably won't get larger. Um, so just for everybody's background, you know, it's realistic to assume that a project is going to happen. It's a matter of we don't know yet exactly what project. So we're using the plans that we have today. Um, I should mention that the city is going to be widening the Loudon Road Bridge, putting a a uh, 14-foot multi-use path on the north side, improving connectivity. Um, the railroad has been quiet, right, Beth? Yeah. Um, they're obviously another butter we have to work with. Um, even if we span up and over them, they have rights. You know, we would have to acquire air rights to do that. Um, so they're the one, the one butter that um, we're still trying to get through to, I guess. So. Um, there's also a utility corridor. There's significant power lines adjacent to the railroad uh, that we would have to consider. Um, so physical constraints, property constraints. There are environmental considerations. I'm not going to call them constraints yet because um, we haven't really figured out our impacts yet. But um, there is floodplain. Uh, our maps do show where the floodplain is. There are wetlands. Um, conservation easements on the east side. Um, and Healy Park, the green space you just mentioned, has a history of contamination um, and wetlands for sure. This is just zooming in a little bit on the 93 project. I don't need to go in much more detail than that. It's obviously wider than what's there today. Um, I mentioned access. Um, so if we build something out there, we want to make sure it's going to be used. And we want to predict that. If we're now creating improved routes along Loudon Road for bikes and peds, are people going to go out of their way to use this facility that we just built, other than to maybe spend some time out over the river? Um, <clears throat> We really want to think about aesthetics. That's where our architect comes in. Um, we're going to challenge you with some questions tonight, like what amenities would you have on a park that's over the highway? What types of things would you like to see there? What would you like to have uh, people drawn to? So uh, you know, those are questions we have. We want to draw those out from you. Um, should it make a visual statement? The, the worst thing we can do is have it be a monstrosity, right? You have 100,000 people driving by every day. Um, we want it to look good. Um, <clears throat> and in the end, we need to consider costs. Uh, no doubt about it. DOT is not going to participate in this. This is a city project. We're obviously hopeful to get some help uh, from government, but um, we need to know what those numbers are. But as we said, at this time, we want to aim big, aim high, and let's see what, what what gels here? <clears throat> I mentioned physical considerations. 
this is just a cross section. Um, Main Street is up here. It comes downhill to Source Store Street along uh, Pleasant Street extension. Goes through the Bricksmore property. Uh, these buildings are drawn more or less to scale. We have to be 22 feet above the railroad, 17 and a half feet above the highway as we go across, which would put us 25 to 30 feet above the river, if not more. Um, we have ADA considerations to get up to those elevations. We have to have long ramps uh, and or other ways of doing it, you know, elevators, that sort of thing. Um, so there are, there are definitely physical considerations when you look at it in cross-section view. Uh, it's a little more daunting than when you're just looking at it on a plan view. So um, this is a listening session tonight. We want to have discussions. We're going to break into four groups. No set um, arrangements. We didn't like count off or anything like that. We would like you to split up from your um, friends and groups. You know, if you came here with a group of folks, split up so we all so we hear different people speaking at the different um, boards. We want to answer these questions, and I'm going to leave this up. Um, the first one is kind of an overall question. You know, what is your vision? Do you have a pre preconceived notion of what this should be, or we, what would you like it to be? Um, what unmet needs will a bridge park fulfill that aren't being met today? How would the bridge park connect people to the river? Um, what about just doing a bridge? What about just doing a park? Um, who is the target user and will they use it? What features should the park include to attract people? Where are the most important connections uh, that this will make? And uh, where would you position the, the bridge park on these plans? We brought some trace paper too and a bunch of markers. We, we, wanna, we want people to um, feel free to write on the plans and express your ideas. We're gonna take notes as well. Um, how might the bridge park benefit the impacted property owners? You know, think about some of the things it could bring to them. And we'd like to get all these things down in words. Um, with, we're going to be developing a feasibility study, a written document, and the more we can record your thoughts, the better. Um, and after today, we're still reachable. Uh, we'll leave our emails up you know, for people to send us emails and that sort of thing after this, so. Um, so at this time, oh yeah, next steps. <clears throat> after tonight, our designers will get together and based on what we've heard, we'll, we'll sketch up some concepts. And then the, we'll have another meeting after this to show those concepts and get feedback. And um, then we'll draft a study which we'll present to council and finalize the study sometime in the fall. Uh, and then hopefully it doesn't get put on a shelf. So I'm gonna leave these questions up. Yes. About eight to 10 months ago, did we have an analogous meeting at the community <coughs> center up on the Heights and we broke out into uh, breakout discussions? Yeah, it wasn't on this though. It was not this project. Okay. Um, practice, yes. I had a council meeting where some of these ideas were discussed. The <coughs> idea was tossed around about sinking the highway and the railroad corridor to get them a little bit farther down and away from the noise line. We also facilitate the deck bridge being not quite as high. Is that at all on the table as far as DOT is concerned and potentially the railroad and the CSA? Um, we have several people here from DOT. If they're willing to answer that at this meeting, uh, that's fine. If <laughs> um, Jason is shaking his head, yes, no. I think it's your meeting, right? Yeah, I it is. Think, uh, at the end of the day, we discussed uh, at the city council meeting that you know it could be a substantial closure of Loudon Road in order for that to occur. So I think, um, you know, as Greg said, think big and kind of 
put those ideas out there. Like we were, uh, again, the original discussion was it would be substantial cost and it would close Loudon Road. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about things. It's about time they close Loudon Road. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I'm uh, just curious. Um, I know there's been floods in the past history with Inkwon a long time ago. Yep. And you have to assume that's why there isn't a lot of property developed along the river. So the river right now, to my knowledge, is running very high. I don't think I've ever seen it running this high in the middle of the winter. Yep. So here's a scenario. We get a horrible march, very cold, and a ton of snow up north. Is the river going to flood? Are we going to have a 100 or 200 year flood in Concord? And what's that going to do to this development on the river? So are you working with DES? Are you using any models to predict that sort of scenario? Uh, because we're in that environment right now. Yeah. Every part of the country is having 100, 200, 300 year, year weather events. So it's a possibility. So um, <clears throat> one reason the east side of the river has not been developed is because it's floodplain. It would flood in a 100 year flood. The cornfields would be underwater in a 100 year flood. Um, downtown Store Street, I don't believe I've ever observed that, and I don't think our um, floodplain maps show that area of flooding. It's, um, it's really the other side, the east side of the river is, is more flood prone. Yep. Right, but my point is how high could it flood if it were to flood in a 200 year event, 100 year event, the river? Could it flood 20 feet? 20 feet is going to be pretty high. Yeah, highly unlikely. Um, well, it is unlikely, yeah. but understand every day the news starts with either the major event in Washington or weather. It does that in the morning and the evening because there are events occurring in the country every single day. New England hasn't been impacted yet, but it's going to be our turn. Yeah. I, I know there are. Um, Historical floods in Concord, historical floods in Manchester, before there was a lot of flood control. There are a lot of dams upstream that do control the floods. Um, there's dam dams downstream that help control the floods. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that it won't happen. I'm not a flood expert. Um, I'm not sure well, what else to say. Pull them in and solve. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that. You know, we would have to talk to NOAA and other organizations that are studying this on a global, you know, basis. We're not studying the Concord watershed uh, ourselves. Um, there may be somebody who is, but I'd be very shocked um, if if a 20-foot flood or, or a flood considerably more than what we've seen in the past 20 years um, is in our near future anyway. So, easily more, but still, 20 feet would still just get. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on all the committees that have been dealing with the state on this. I'm not going to stay because I have another meeting. I think people are passionate about this. My only advice to the groups is dream big. And uh, I just love giving this example. The federal government, through earmarks, appropriated $150 million to rebuild not one, but two bridges in Portsmouth, not counting the interstate bridge, theoretically to give access for freight coming into Portsmouth. I'm the chairman of the Pease Development Authority. We own the docks. There will never be any significant freight there. But the federal government, through the appropriations process, through our delegation, Susan Collins, spent all that money. There are beautiful bridges there. If Portsmouth is worth $150 million for new bridges, one of which was completely, in my view, superfluous, to create access to a dock that we don't use and never will use because the currents in the river are too significant other than to bring in salt and sand, we should dream big. and. I love DOT, but I will say this. When we did our Main Street project and we applied for a Tiger grant, we were told we couldn't, that only DOT could. That was an untruth, okay? And we applied, and we got $5 million, and we sold ourselves short because we could have gotten the grant for $10 million if we had dreamed a little bigger. It was easy peasy. It was done through 
predecessor to earmarks. So DOT is going to build a road. They made it clear they can't take on this project. We should, when you're doing your scheming, don't be constrained by that. In my experience, long experience dealing with earmarks before my mentor John McCain didn't like them, but we ignored him on that. Um, if you don't ask big, you don't get big. And Concord has a history of dreaming big, sizing it down to 70%, and being happy with 50%. We are the capital city. This city should be a show place instead of a place people drive by. The interstate's got to be expanded so people can drive by, but I hope in all your scheming, everybody dreams big and doesn't worry about the price tag at this point, because there are ways to work to get the price solved. Let's try this. Go here. big. Go big. Please go big. You can always reduce it. If you don't ask for it, you never get it. So Thank it's you. my sermon. I think that uh, we are the Corps of Engineers. They're experts um, in flood control. Um, should be consulted in this matter. Um, and perhaps they have some answers as far as dam construction. Uh, they're experts at it. And um, there's an office nearby. So um, they should be consulted about the feasibility of flood control and what it's all about. But also I think uh, housing might be a, also a possibility uh, over the bridge. I've seen some buildings over bridges there in different cities, so it's possible to have that as well. Okay, we'll, like in Delaware and New York and New Jersey. We'll document comments like this during our breakouts. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we break out? Real quick, Greg. Yep. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the contamination down, I'm guessing it's down on the downstream end of Ely Park. Yep. Any, what do you mean by is it active surface? Is it, you know, well, how, much, how much of a constraint is the contamination we're aware of at that point? As I'm far as doing anything on the, ground, on the top of the ground? Um, I'm actually not positive. I know there's been remediation. Yeah. Okay. It was a coal tower issue. Yeah. Um, it depends on what you're planning to do, really. If you're just going to be doing surface work, it's probably a good thing. You might be capping it, right? <clears throat> um, it really depends on what your plan is. Healy Park has a lot of wetlands and floodplain as well. Okay. So, yep. Thanks. Anyone else? Yep. Scott, to what extent does the city of Concord need a sign off from DOT on any or are, are they an obstacle between the city and the Federal Transportation Department? Uh, DOT would have to sign off, absolutely. Um, you know, constructing something over an interstate highway, um, there'd be a lot of eyes on it. And um, we, we met with DOT and they're willing to, you know, work with us, see what we come up with. Yeah. There would be there would be maintenance agreements. There would be all kinds of things required. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, break. Elevated stage. If you went to the uh, multicultural festival last fall, you saw all of what people of Concord have to offer as far as showing their cultures and entertainment and creating reasons to come down. So thank you guys. This was great. I love that we have to stop people from talking. That means there's a lot of good ideas generating. And I think we got a lot of good feedback. Um, we're not going to report out by groups. What we're going to do is compile all this information. It'll be on the city's website probably within the next week or so. We'll have the presentation up. Concrete TV will have the recording up. Um, so just look on the uh, city website 
for it to be posted and we'll have email addresses there. So if you have more comments after tonight, you can send emails to me and I'll coordinate with our consultants. Um, and then we'll be reporting back once we're ready for the next step and once we actually have concepts to look at and have things to react to um, that hopefully we gather enough information and we sort of represent what we think the community wants. So um, I think that's it. Thank you all for coming out and have a good night.